Hi everybody, it's Gemma, welcome back to Pampered Wolf. Today we're gonna to be talking all about how we can prevent, how we can control, and how we can get rid of any hyperpigmentation that we have on our skin. I did a video the other day where I spoke about the 10 tips that actually had improved my makeup over the last couple of years. And within that video, I talked about not trying to cover things over with makeup, going straight to the source, and treating those things with skincare. But within that video, I didn't really go into masses of detail and I also didn't give you any of my recommendations Which I'm going to do at the end of this video So if you are interested in finding out how you can prevent control and get rid of your hyperpigmentation And you want to know which products to use then do keep watching if you are new here Hi, my name's Gemma. I'm a fully qualified esthetician and lover of anything beauty skincare and makeup I no longer practice in a salon or a clinic as my full-time job is now YouTube I I upload videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 8 p.m. London time. And I'm also on Instagram if you want to check me out on there. It's at Pampered Wolf, all lowercase, no spaces. I'd really appreciate it if you would also consider clicking that subscribe button, that notification bell, and also the thumbs up button as well. Let's get on with this video. So like I said in the intro, we're gonna be looking at preventing pigmentation. So preventing any future pigmentation, which will help get rid of the pigmentation that you have on your skin right now. Also controlling your pigmentation. So controlling that melanin production within the skin, which will stop any pigmentation from occurring in the future. And also wiping out and destroying the pigmentation that you already have on your skin, which will not work by the way, if you're not doing the previous two steps of preventing any future pigmentation and controlling the melanin production. So what is hyperpigmentation and how does it show on our skin? Now the first one I'm gonna talk about is sun damage and or age spots because as you get older you tend to call them age spots but when you're younger, it's sun damage. It's basically the same thing caused by the same thing, which is UV exposure. As you get older, you've obviously had much more UV exposure than when you were younger, which is why we call them age spots. But people are getting them younger and younger and younger in life due to certain skincare that they're using on their skin, like retinols and AHAs and BHAs, and then they're not properly protecting their skin using a high factor S. SPF every single day and because of that they're getting UV exposure and uh, they're getting sun damage and those age spots and pigmentation on the skin. So the second one that you can see is the post acne mark. So if you get a little blemish on the skin, you scratch the surface, it's a bit of trauma, it's a bit of inflammation, you then go out, you expose yourself to those UV rays and that little mark goes really brown and it is so stubborn it will not go no matter what you do. But again, if you are not preventing the future hyperpigmentation and protecting your skin, that mark will never go no matter what you try. The third one I'm gonna talk about is melasma. Now, melasma tends to be caused by hormonal changes in the body and also UV exposure. So as you can see, there is a common theme in here and that common theme is UV exposure sun damage. So that leads me straight into preventing hyperpigmentation. Now the main source of prevention for hyperpigmentation is obviously going to be a really high quality sunscreen. As you've seen, all the causes of all the pigmentation are UV exposure. So it's really, really important that we protect our skin against both UVA and UVB damage. Really, really important. The sunscreen that you choose has to be a broad spectrum sunscreen. And if it can also protect you against any blue light exposure, that's even better. So any added antioxidants in there which can target any pigmentation and try and prevent pigmentation even better still. The one that I recommend, this is the one that my mum is using at the moment. This is the Ultra Sun Face and uh, this is only a tester. My mum has the full version. 
This is really quite a rich product. So if you have a super oily skin, you may not get on with this, but my mum has a combination oily skin and is really, really liking this. It layers well underneath makeup, looks really, really beautiful. But again, it is quite a rich product. And just because it's rich doesn't mean that you need to apply less. You still need to apply the quarter of a teaspoon to get the full amount of protection. This one is an anti-aging and anti-pigmentation sun protection for ultra sensitive skin. So everybody should be able to get away with this. It's full of antioxidants and it's not perfumed. It's got no mineral oil, no emulsifiers, no preservatives, and this one is water resistant. So if you are gonna be in the sun, if you are going to be quite warm in humid climate, this one might be really, really good for you. I find this is very, very comfortable on my skin. And if I'm wearing this, I tend to ditch my rich moisture and just go straight in for this one because this is rich enough on my skin. I don't need that moisturizing step in my skincare routine. So this is definitely the one that I would recommend. It's absolutely fantastic and it's often on offer on QVC. So do keep your eye out for that, but I will link the product in the description box below for you. The next form of prevention comes in antioxidants. Now, a lot of people think that vitamin C is the only antioxidant that is great for sun damage, and that is just not the case. I myself can't use vitamin C products as I've spoken about quite a lot on my channel. So I've had to seek out other antioxidants that do very, very similar jobs. The main one that I absolutely love is niacinamide. And I'll go into that in a little bit more detail a little bit later on because niacinamide is absolutely fantastic for sun damage. The other ones are retinols, which are absolutely brilliant and uh, bacuchiol. Now I'm gonna do a separate video all about bacuchiol and retinoids and which one is better and which one may suit your skin best because Bakuchiol has a lot of similar qualities or rather does very similar things to a retinoid and yet it has very, very little side effects. So you won't get that flaking and you won't get that itchiness or any irritation. So I will go into that in more depth in a future video, but uh, for now, antioxidants are absolutely fantastic at targeting that pigmentation and also preventing that pigmentation also. So let's talk about the next step, which is to control and reduce your melanin production. Now, this is really, really important if you want to wipe out all of your hyperpigmentation and you don't want it to come back in the future. The most potent ingredient, the one that's going to do the most good in the quickest time is hydroquinone. Now, hydroquinone is only available on prescription in the UK. I'm not quite sure about the rest of the world because I think we're quite strict in the UK. I know tretinoin is only available on prescription in the UK, which is the most potent form of vitamin A, is a retinoid. And uh, I know in other parts of the world, you can just walk into your chemist and buy it over the counter. So I'm not quite sure whether you'll be able to do the same with hydroquinone, but I know in the UK, it's only available on prescription. Now, if you are struggling to get it through your GP, you can get hydroquinone through Dermatica. I don't have it in my tretinoin prescription. I don't feel like it's necessary for me. I have tretinoin and niacinamide. However, my mum does have tretinoin and hydroquinone in her prescription. So my mum is using hydroquinone at the moment and it's doing the world of good for her skin. So hydroquinone is the first ingredient that I highly recommend if you do suffer with hyperpigmentation. The second ingredient that I want to recommend for hyperpigmentation, in fact, for most things actually, is azelaic acid or azelaic acid, however you want to pronounce it. This comes in between five and 20% strengths. Usually in the UK, anything over 10% strength for or azelaic acid needs to come on a prescription, but I have found a 15% strength one and I will link it in the description box below. It comes in a serum form and it's actually really quite nice. Um, I will link that, but I'm not quite sure why that's available over the counter. I need to do a little bit more research into that. So the reason I love azelaic acid so, so much is because it does so much. So it will reduce redness, which means it's great for anybody that suffers with rosacea. It also reduces any texture. It's an anti-inflammatory, so it's great for anybody with any acne or any post-acne marks or inflammation. It's also anti-comodal, which means that it will not block your pores 
In fact, it will do the opposite. It will help clean out your pores. It's also antibacterial, which is also great if you suffer with blemishes. And it's suitable for practically everybody, even those with a really sensitive skin. Azelaic acid is also safe to use within pregnancy and whilst you're breastfeeding as well. So that's another reason why it's a great, great ingredient. You're also able to mix this quite happily. It's quite a happy product. So you can mix this with all the other ingredients ingredients that I suggest you use for hyperpigmentation. So AHAs, you can mix it with any niacinamide, any vitamin C. It's absolutely fantastic with all those other ingredients. So it's quite a happy, easy product to use, which is why I love it so much. So the one that I highly recommend is the one from The Ordinary, which is 10% strength. I'm actually got this on today. It's a very, very comfortable feeling. The one thing that I will say is that you do have to be quite careful how you apply it. Apply it very, very sparingly because this can react with products that you put on top of this. So it can make your foundation look a little bit patchy. Obviously, we're not worried about foundation at this moment in time, but I do need to make you aware that because of the slight silicony texture on the surface, it can go a little bit patchy if you apply too much at once. So just apply it really sparingly and you will have no issues. It's a lovely, lovely product and it actually mattifies and smooths off the skin as well. So if you have oily skin, this will be great, great for you, but also a dry skin can use this as well. The next ingredient that will control and reduce your melanin production is a vitamin C. I think everybody knows that vitamin C is great for pigmentation marks. Now I'm actually not gonna list my favorite vitamin C products because I have none, because my skin does not like vitamin C and I always like to try out the products that I'm recommending for you. If I don't like them, I won't recommend them. So I'm actually gonna reach out to all of the Pampered Wolf Pack here. If you could list all of your favorite high potency vitamin Cs, those high potencies that are really gonna target that hyperpigmentation that you've absolutely loved, that you've got good results from, in the comment section below. That would really help everybody out. Definitely would help me out. It just means that I don't have to try out any more vitamin C products and have really bad skin reactions. So really thank you for doing that in advance. The next product that I highly recommend to reduce and also to control your melanin production is Bakuchiol. Now Bakuchiol is a great product for doing this and I highly recommend the 1% serum from Revolution. Really, really lovely product. Also the Inculin has a great Bakuchiol cream, which is really, really nice as well. So they are my two recommendations for Bakuchiol. So before I jump into the products that will help reduce any surface pigmentation that you have, I want to talk about niacinamide a little bit more. I said I was going to go into it in a bit of greater depth earlier on in the video, and now is the time. I absolutely love niacinamide. Niacinamide is my favorite antioxidant for very, very good reason, not just for hyperpigmentation pigmentation issues. It's absolutely unbelievable. So it protects the skin against any free radical damage. So that's sun damage, smoke damage, any pollution, blue rays, obviously in conjunction with a great sunscreen. It will improve skin's hydration. It will also improve skin texture. It will regulate your sebum production. So it's great for anybody with an oilier skin, but those hydration factors as well makes it absolutely fantastic for anybody with a dry skin as well. And it promotes a healthy skin barrier function, which is absolutely absolutely vital for a healthy skin. Not only does niacinamide do all of those things, but it also blocks the melanin that the body produces from getting to the surface of the skin, therefore preventing hyperpigmentation. Now it does it slightly differently to all of the other ingredients that prevent pigmentation because those tend to reduce melanin production, whereas niacinamide will block the melanin from getting to the surface of the skin and therefore preventing the hyperpigmentation from taking place. So it's an absolutely unbelievable believable ingredient and I highly recommend that if it isn't in your routine you put it in your routine. Now the most affordable ones are absolutely fantastic. I use the niacinamide 10% plus zinc 1% from The Ordinary on a daily basis and I definitely wouldn't be without it but if you want to go upper strength the Revolution have introduced a super strength formula niacinamide which is 15% so if you'd rather go for the 15% then I highly recommend the Revolution. 
Revolution product. Now let's talk about those products that will get rid of the surface pigmentation that you have with exfoliation. These products don't do anything else other than get rid of the pigmentation. So they won't prevent it, they won't control any melanin, they won't block any melanin, and they won't reduce any melanin production. They're just there to get rid of what you have. And if you haven't done the previous steps, you're not gonna have any actual success with this step. So you must do all the other steps first. The main one that will reduce the pigmentation on the surface of the skin are AHAs. And I highly recommend lactic acid or glycolic acid for this stage. I use the ones from The Ordinary and I will list them in the description box. The other products that will also do this step as well as some of the previous steps that we've spoken about before are retinoids, azelaic acid and also vitamin C. So they are really, really good. Now I've spoken about azelaic acid and the ones that I would recommend and I've listed those in the description box for you, but let's talk about retinoids. Now retinoids are really, really difficult to recommend because it depends on what stage you're at with your skin. Now, I recommend that you start off with the Ordinary's Retinoid 2% in Emulsion because it's the mildest and it's the kindest to your skin. You won't get a lot of irritation with this product. Once you've used that product, I would then perhaps step it up to the La Roche-Posay uh, Redermic R Cream, which is absolutely fantastic. And then one step further, the Paula's Choice Retinoid is absolutely unbelievable, out of this world, does a great job. Once you've done those steps, I'd recommend that you step it up to more of a prescription strength, maybe a 0.025% tretinoin, which will do the world of good for your skin. So that's it for hyperpigmentation. We've spoken about preventing it. We've spoken about controlling and reducing melanin production, also blocking melanin production, and then getting rid of any hyperpigmentation from the surface of the skin and all of my recommendations to go with it. I really hope that you found this video helpful. Do let me know what you thought about it in the comments section below. Also, please don't forget to list your recommendations for a high potency vitamin C that you've had a really good experience with just to share your knowledge with the rest of the pack. Really, thank you so much for doing that. It just means that I don't have to experiment more with a vitamin C because it just sends chills down my spine now. It really does. Anyway, hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.